In this lesson, we are going to pull MySQL image and create a container in Docker. We will create a database, create certain tables, fire some queries within the database and also would connect to the database from an external ID from our desktop. Now this entire process we are going to perform using two ways. One is using the Docker commands from the command line as well as from the Docker desktop. I think this lesson is going to be fun and interesting for you. Let's get started. So here I have Docker desktop in my system and it is empty. I don't have any images, containers, etc. So the first thing that I can do, I can pull the MySQL image in my system. Now from where we would get the MySQL image, we can go to Docker Hub and there we can search for MySQL. If I press enter, click on MySQL. So on the right hand side, this is the basic command to pull the MySQL image. And if I scroll down, there are further documentation available regarding what is MySQL, how to start a MySQL instance using this Docker command, how to connect to MySQL from the command line client, etc. If I go to my command line, first I'm going to fire this particular command, docker run name MySQL container. This is a container name. And here I'm passing environment variable, MySQL root password equal to password. Port I'm specifying that the container port 3306 would be mapped to the host port 3306 as well. And here I have the image name MySQL colon latest. Let me press enter. I don't have the image locally. So it is pulling the image from Docker Hub. Let me go to Docker desktop. If I go to images, I can see this is the image status is in use. If I go here under container, I see this is the container. It is in running state. It is showing the ports that is mapped. CPU percentage consumed last started 30 seconds ago. That is fine. If I click on the MySQL container, I can see further details. This is the logs that you can see. This is basically the MySQL log. Under inspect, there are further details. We are not drilling down into it. But some important aspects, we did some port mapping, right? If I click on port binding, you can see this particular section 3306 TCP to this host port. We added some environment value. If I click over here, I can see MySQL root password equal to password. This particular environment value we mentioned. Now this is in raw JSON format. If I click on this, we have a different view of the same value. We did not bind anything. I can go to the execution here. It provides us direct access to the container. We can run commands over here. If I click on files, we can see different files within the container and under stats, we see CPU usage, memory usage, disk, network, etc. Now inside MySQL, I want to create database and I'll do it using command line first. Then we will do the entire thing from Docker desktop only. Now I want to create a new database. I'll do it from command line. Let me go there, clearing the screen. So I'm running this docker execute command. It would connect to the shell of this particular container, mysql underscore container. That is the name we provided earlier. Now I'm into the shell. Once we are inside the terminal, we have to execute some standard commands to create the database, to connect to the database, create some tables, etc. Let me do that. Now this would try to connect to MySQL. I'm connected to MySQL. Let me try creating a database. It is created. Use the database. Test DB. Database changed. Now I'm going to create one table over here. Employee table with some column. Pressing enter. Got created. Going to insert some data over here. One row inserted. Let me insert another record. Press enter. Let me do a select star. Fine, it's showing me the records. Now, as we did the port mapping, this database we can access from any SQL client as well. I have a local SQL client. I'm going to connect to the MySQL using that. So I'm using this editor, the community version of Beekeeper Studio. Let me double click on this, maximizing it. Select a connection type, MySQL, host localhost port 3306. User is root, password is password, database I'm mentioning test DB, do a test connection, connection looks good. I'm going to save this connection, click on save, now click on connect. I can see this employee table over here and I can execute the command as well. Let me do that. I'm getting the type assistant or the content assist over here, click on run. 
we have the records. So what we did here, we pulled one image, we created a container. Now while creating the container, we had to keep in mind like what MySQL user or password to set, what port mapping we have to do. And then once the container was up, we could connect to it from command line, executing the Docker commands and we inserted the data. Now there is another way. If I go back to Docker desktop, this is my image and this is my container. The same process, entire process I'll do from Docker desktop only without taking any help from the command line. How to do that? Let me show you. First, I'm stopping the container, deleting it, delete forever, going to image, deleting this. Now we have everything empty. We don't have any container, any image. So first thing we need to pull image. I can click on search images to run. I can type MySQL or anything I want. Now this is where Docker desktop makes it easy. You can click on pull or run. You don't need to go to the command line. And also additionally from here you can explore the documentation. Directly it will show you the different important commands, the suggestions, the tips, etc. You don't need to go to Docker Hub as well. You can stay within the Docker desktop and explore the documentation. I'm going to execute this pull command. It's going to take a while. Once it is complete, I'll resume the recording. Status downloaded newer image for MySQL colon latest. Same message we got when we were executing the Docker commands from the command line. If I go to images now, I have the image. Its status is unused. If I go to container, there is nothing. Now I need to run from here and I need to pass certain parameters. When you are running a new container, there are some optional settings. If I expand it, I need to provide a port. This is my host port. Volume, I am not giving anything. Under environment variables, whatever we provided during those docker run commands, those values we should pass. So I am adding this environment variable, MySQL root password and the value. Click on run. You can notice one thing over here. I have not moved out of the Docker desktop and without running any command, I can observe and understand what is actually going on. So this Docker desktop provides a lot of clarity and ease of use in certain scenarios. You can use Docker commands. Those are indispensable in certain scenarios. But in most of the cases, Docker desktop with its UI makes troubleshooting or debugging a lot easier, a lot user friendly provided you know how to use it. You can see the message ready for connections version this MySQL community server. Inspect we saw earlier so I don't want to go into the details. Now comes the execution part. Whatever we did from the command line same thing we can do from here. I'm pasting the commands one by one logging into MySQL creating the database using the database testdb Table creation, it got created. Insert record. Inserting another one. Now, last time we inserted two. This time I'm going to insert three. So we have three records now. Let me do a select. Executing select star from employee. Now we have three records. I can go to the editor now. The connection would be same, but I have to reconnect. Let me do a refresh database. Do a run. I can see three records. Connection wise, we have a different container, but the parameters, the credentials, everything is same. With the new container also, we are able to connect to MySQL and retrieve the records. So overall what we have done, using command line, we executed Docker commands, pulled MySQL image, created a container, and we were able to play with the database. Now, same set of things we did in much easier way from the Docker desktop. As we have the UI over there, we did not need to do anything in the command line apart from executing the SQL scripts. That anyways, we have to do. I hope you have learned something useful from this lesson. And if that is the case, please like this video and subscribe to this channel if you wish. Maybe add some comments as your feedback if possible. Thanks a lot for your time.